Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is USMLE Videos. Once again, welcome to our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. On this website, we discuss a new topic every day, and uh, you are welcome to visit us and uh, watch our videos and uh, get the most important points for USMLE examination. Tonight, I want to discuss warfarin or comadin some of the most most important points and questions come from this medication because it is the most commonly used oral anticoagulant in the united states that's why so many questions will bombard you in the examination it's very important to understand how this drug works how you administer this drug, what are its side effects, what are its contraindications, and uh, what do you do to treat the toxicity of this medication. So those are the main issues we are going to discuss this evening. Now, for people who are interested to know the history, this medication was actually found in cattle. It caused hemorrhagic disorder in cattle, and in fact, Warfarin stands for Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation. So they found this medication and uh, later from cattle this medication is uh, uh, transferred to human beings and now it became the most commonly prescribed oral anticoagulant in the United States of America. Now warfarin is generally administered as a sodium salt. 99% of this medication is bound to albumin. That's why it is uh, limited to albumin, albumin space. Its uh, availability and uh, volume of distribution is uh, small. However, it has a long half-life in plasma, like 36 hours. Now, mechanism of action. If you want to remember simply, it blocks anti uh, sorry coagulant proteins it blocks prothrombin factor 7 factor 9 and factor 10 this is very very important to remember and it also blocks vitamin k so prothrombin factor 7 factor 9 and factor 10 and vitamin k these are blocked now if you want to go into details it says Warfarin blocks gamma carboxylation of several glutamate residues in prothrombin and factors 7, 9, 10 and prothrombin. And it also oxidizes vitamin K. Vitamin K is active in its reduced form. So, warfarin, it oxidizes vitamin K and makes it inactive. So these are the two main actions of warfarin. Now let us talk a few things about uh, its action. There is an 8 to 12 hour delay in the action of uh, warfarin because warfarin acts through blocking coagulant factors and coagulant factors have different half-lives. So warfarin has to block each one of them and their half-life varies from one to another. That's why it, it, it takes at least 8 to 12 hours for its action to, uh, uh, to realize. Moreover, you need to use a higher dose of warfarin whenever you want its effect within a few hours. Now, let us talk about uh, toxicity. There are important contraindications. Number one on the list is pregnancy. That is very, very important. In fact, warfarin, it crosses the placenta and it causes hemorrhagic disorder in the fetus. That is number one. Number two, it causes birth defects in the baby. So those are the two main important uh, contraindications the, in, in pregnancy. Then we need to talk about uh, cutaneous necrosis. You give warfarin to a patient after a few days, you see some kind of necrosis on his chest or on, or on his bones. 
that is due to warfarin's blocking of anticoagulant proteins protein C and protein S, especially, especially protein S. So its inhibition is the cause for this problem. And warfarin also causes uh, hemorrhagic infection. Hemorrhagic infection. This is due to depression of protein C synthesis. Now let us talk a few minutes about uh, administration and dosage. Usually we start at 5 milligrams uh, to 10 milligrams based on the weight of the patient and also the immediacy of the condition he presented with. Now you always are a monitor PT and INR when you give Coumadin to any patient. You need to do it like uh, weekly for a few weeks and then you can do it bi-weekly later. So basically maintaining a proper PT and INR is very very important. Most people they stay on a maintenance dose of 5 to 7 milligrams per day of Coumadin. And INR this is very very important point. If a patient has prophylaxis or treatment of thrombotic disease, you should keep his or her INR between 2 and 3. For example, a patient has atrial fibrillation and how much INR is the target between 2 and 3. But if the patient has an artificial valve in his heart, what is the target INR between 2.5 and 3.5? Those are important numbers you need to remember. Now warfarin does not work in all patients. If a patient has gastrointestinal cancer, he or she develops warfarin resistance. In these patients, we use low molecular weight heparin like anoxaparin or levoxaparin. But this syndrome is called Trossias syndrome. This is very important to remember. In these patients, they have cancer, advanced cancer, and you cannot use warfarin. You need to put them on low molecular weight heparins. Now, when we talk about uh, interactions of uh, warfarin, we need to remember that drugs like uh, cimetidine, disulfiram, metronidazole, fluconazole, phenylbutazone, sulfinpyrazone, these medications, they, they, um, they increase the PT. In other words, what they are doing is they are potentiating the actions of warfarin. On the other hand, drugs like barbiturates or rifampin, they induce the enzymes in the liver and thereby they metabolize warfarin very, very quickly. As a result, warfarin does not act that much and prothrombin time decreases. So these are very, very important to remember. And now I want to talk about reversal of warfarin action. Warfarin or comadin can cause comadin coagulopathy they takes away, you see as I mentioned earlier, it acts by inhibiting the coagulation factors. So when the toxicity happens, there is a deficiency of coagulation factors. And as a result, patient might get bleeding, like subarachnoid hemorrhage or subdural hemorrhage or bleeding of uh, peptic ulcer. In those patients, you should always uh, give factor 7 remember that very very well factor 7 first give that because fresh progen plasma may not be available on time so give factor 7 concentrate in order to reverse the action of comedin after that you can also give vitamin k because it warfarin blocks vitamin k simply give what warfarin blocks it blocks coagulation factors. So start with factor 7. And the other way you can do is to call the lab and ask for fresh frozen plasma. Fresh frozen plasma, FFP. So factor 7, FFP and vitamin K, they play, they play a role in warfarin reversal. Thank you. You can always visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you.